In this video, I will talk about energy stored in a capacitor. At last, I will show you the energy storage equation of a capacitor. Let's say I have a parallel plate capacitor here. This parallel plate capacitor has capacitance of C. Between these two parallel plates, there will be an insulating or dielectric medium. Okay, now see, if I connect this capacitor with this DC voltage source, this is the positive terminal of the source and this is the negative terminal of the source, you will see this positive terminal will attract the electrons from this plate towards it therefore this side of the capacitor will be positively charged and this source will supply electrons at this terminal as it will receive electrons from this negative terminal it will get negatively charged now let me talk about how the energy is stored in a capacitor due to the charging of capacitor Okay, let's say I have this parallel plate capacitor here. Initially, the capacitor is uncharged. See, there is no charge stored in this capacitor. As a result, Q0 will be equal to 0. Okay, and this capacitor is connected in series with this switch, this 50 ohm resistor, and this 9 volt source. This is its negative term, this is its positive terminal, and this is its negative terminal. When this capacitor is initially uncharged, Q0 will be equal to 0. As a result, the voltage across the capacitor, which we will denote with Vc, this Vc will be equal to 0. Okay, now see if I close this switch you will see this positive terminal of the source will be connected with this side of the capacitor and the negative terminal of the source will be connected with this side of the capacitor see as this is positive terminal we know that positive terminal of a battery attracts electrons towards it therefore it will take out electrons from this side of the capacitor therefore it will be positively charged see this is the positively charged stored in this capacitor and we know that the negative terminal of a DC source supplies electrons in a circuit therefore you will see this negative terminal will supply electrons in this direction to this capacitor plates as it will receive electrons from this side of the battery therefore it will be negatively charged and the higher the char charge stored in the capacitor the higher the voltage will be across this capacitor now see as the time goes by the capacitor gets more charged that means more electrons are taken out from this side and more electrons are supplied in this side now see as this is positive terminal of the battery and this is negative terminal of the battery this side of the battery are attracting electrons in this direction as a result you will see there will be a movement of electron in this direction of the circuit as this is negative terminal it will supply the electrons in this direction as a result this side of the capacitor gets positively charged and this side of the capacitor gets negatively charged now see why what will happen when these capacitor players get charged see this is positive side and this is negative side we know that positive side attracts electrons towards it therefore you will see when we when we will have positive charged stored in this capacitor plate when this voltage source will try to attract an electron in this direction it will attract that electrons in opposite direction okay therefore you will see there will be an opposing force created due to this capacitor charge and and this is the negative terminal and it will supply electrons in this side as this capacitor plate is negatively charged therefore you will see when the voltage source will supply electrons in this direction this negatively charged capacitor plate will will repel the electrons in this direction or it will oppose the movement of electrons so i can say that when initially when the capacitor is fully uncharged there is no opposing force electrons can be easily drawn by this positive terminal of the battery and electrons can be easily supplied by this negative terminal of the battery but as more charges are developed it will be difficult for us to move the electrons in this circuit due to the opposing force created due to the charges stored in the parallel plate capacitor so i can say that if i want to move a single electron let's say from this terminal of the plate to this positive terminal or if I want to supply an electron from this terminal of the battery to this plate 
we have to expend energy against this opposing force and that expenditure of energy will create an electrostatic field and that electrostatic field will be stored within the dielectric medium of the parallel plate capacitor this is how the energy is stored in a parallel plate capacitor now let me derive the equation of this parallel plate capacitor energy okay now let me show you the energy stored in a capacitor see this is parallel plate capacitor c and we are charging this capacitor with a dc voltage source of v as this is positive terminal of the source it will draw electrons from this side so this plate of the capacitor will be positively charged and it, as this is negative terminal of the source it will supply the electrons at this side therefore it will be negatively charged let's say at any instant of charging the charge stored in this capacitor is q as a result the voltage across this capacitor is v c vc is the voltage across the capacitor due to its charge because if this side of the capacitor is positively charged and this side of the capacitor is negatively charged the parallel plates of the capacitor will act like a dc voltage source now see if i want to draw an electron from this side of the capacitor this positive terminal of the battery will try to attract the electrons in this direction but you will see the positive charge is stored in this capacitor and that positive charge will oppose the movement of electrons and that positive charge will attract those electrons in this direction now see as this is negative terminal of the battery it will try to supply the electrons to this plate of the capacitor but we have negative charge stored in this capacitor so that negative charge will oppose the electrons in this direction therefore you will see there will be an opposing force due to the charge stored in this capacitor okay and that opposing force will oppose the movement of electrons in the circuit therefore we have to expend some energy if we want to move an electron from this plate to this plate of the capacitor okay let's say due to the charge q and the voltage across the capacitor vc the capacitance of this c the capacitance c equal to q divided by vc we can write this formula by using this famous relation q equal to c v c okay now see when this capacitor gets positively charged let's say at that instant v joules of work will be done in transferring one coulomb of charge from one plate to another plate of the capacitor this implies that if i have one coulomb charge in the circuit and if i want to move that one coulomb of charge from this plate to this plate of the capacitor i have to do a work of v joules due to the opposing force created in this capacitor that means if i have one coulomb of charge in this capacitor and if i want to move that one coulomb charge from this terminal from this plate of the capacitor to through this circuit up to this plate of the capacitor due to the opposing force created by the charge in the capacitor we have to do a small amount of work v joules of work will be done in transferring one coulomb of charge from one plate to another plate of capacitor okay so if i want to move the electrons or charge in the circuit due to this opposing force we have to do some amount of work let's say we transfer a small amount of charge dq and we know that voltage is the amount of work required to move charges from one point to another point of the circuit therefore i can easily write down if i want to move a small charge of dq in the circuit the amount of work done dw will be equal to v into dq so in that circuit if we want to move a small amount of charge dq we have to do a work of dw equal to c vc into dv and as the capacitor is getting charged the voltage across the capacitor v c goes higher okay now see if i want to store the voltage vc equal to v in this capacitor we have to 
move all the electrons of this capacitor flares to this positive terminal and we have to supply all the electrons in the negative terminal of the cap of this supply voltage to this capacitor flares as a result this capacitor will fully charged this is the condition of fully charged you will see all the electrons will be drawn or taken out from this plate and all the electrons in the negative terminal of the source will be supplied in this capacitor plate now how do we calculate the energy stored in the capacitor initially when the capacitor was uncharged in that case the charge in the capacitor was zero coulomb as a result the voltage in the capacitor vc was equal to zero volt by applying the voltage v we are storing the charge of q coulomb in the capacitor as a result the voltage across the capacitor will be increased gradually towards this v volt therefore to move one coulomb of charge in the capacitor circuit we do a small amount of work cv dv if i want to move q coulomb of charge in that case the voltage will be increased from 0 volt to v volt and the work done in raising the voltage across the capacitor will be stored as energy in that capacitor so i will integrate dw equal to cv dv within the voltage limit 0 to v volt and that will give us our work done w equal to integration of cv dv within integral limit 0 to v c is the capacitance in a capacitor so it will be constant so i so i will take this c out of integration sign c integration of v dv from 0 to v if i integrate v dv i will get v square divided by 2 and the limit will be 0 v so if i put the value of v and 0 here i will get the amount of work done w equal to half cv square and you know that q equal to cv if i put the value of q here i will get q square divided by 2c so this will be the amount of work done in the capacitor and th this work done w will be stored in the form of electrostatic energy in the capacitor and that will be equal to half cv square or q square divided by 2 c okay that's it thank you